Bruce Garriock of Post Media News with Michael Trakos of Post Media. Michael, the first round is in the books here at the Rogers Arena in Vancouver of the NHL draft. And a lot of people talked about volatility. Jack Hughes and Capocacco went first and second overall to the New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers, and that was expected. But after that, did you see the volatility that everybody talked about? Yeah, yes and no. We did see some guys fall. We saw some surprise picks. I was surprised that Vancouver uh, sort of went off the board and got a uh, Russian player and, and Vasily uh, Podkolzig. Uh, I was surprised that a guy like Cole Caulfield dropped all the way to Montreal Canadiens. And, you know, that's a, that's a small team that just got a lot smaller. But you know what? The, the one thing I was really kind of concerned about or kind of waiting for that shoe to drop was the, the big trades. Like, we heard... You know, Toronto was talking with Nashville. Montreal was talking to Nashville in terms of P.K. Subban. We didn't see that trade yet. Um, I wonder if a lot of that is due to the fact that we still don't know what that salary cap is going to be. We're expected to hear that on Saturday, and what we're expecting to hear is that it's going to be lower than usual. I think that complicates a lot of things. The other thing that really complicates it is that there's so many RFAs that need to be re-signed, uh, whether it's Toronto, Winnipeg, Calgary. It seems like everyone has got a star-studded RFA. I think that's really holding things up. Well, and it's interesting because I think a lot of people expected action on the draft floor here tonight, perhaps some picks to move around. But when you talk to general managers, Michael, they said that they felt it was going to be difficult to move up in this mm -hmm. draft because of, because of the way nobody could predict which way it was going to go. Now, General managers need to know what that cap number is going to be. We're yep. going to know that cap number Saturday morning. You know and I know what happens here, Michael. When you hear names like P.K. Subban and Kyle Turris in Nashville, mm -hmm. when you hear some of the names that are coming out of Toronto with Mitch, Mar with Mitch Marner needing to sign a deal, that, that what's going to happen here is the general managers are going to put the deals on the table here and they're going to set the table for deals, Definitely. I think, that are going to happen next week. 100%. And I think that's sort of... That's what this draft is about. You get all 31 general managers. They were in the meetings yesterday on Friday. Now they're on the draft floor. You just continue those meetings. But like you said, it's setting the table for what's to come. And it's setting those parameters. And don't be surprised now that you know we're, we still got a, another week and a couple of days until July 1 free agency. So there is time for those trades to happen. Are they going to happen, though, Bruce? Like, we keep hearing rumors and rumors. And, you know, a year ago, the only big trade we saw at the draft was Calgary swapping two players um, with Carolina. And this year, you know, for all the rumors that we're hearing, it's all just smoke. There's no fire right now. So, you know, like, the one trade that we saw on Friday night was, what, Philadelphia trading Arizona, and they swapped picks. Like, that's not a big trade. That doesn't get me excited, and that's not going to change anything. Well, it'll be interesting to watch the Vancouver Canucks because there's been an awful lot of talk here tonight about their interest in Tyson Berry. We'll see what happens on day two of the draft. For Post Media in Vancouver, I'm Bruce Garriock with Michael Trakos.